What's good everybody? I'm Brandon. Hey bro, today I'm about to do another video from Watch Mojo. This video right here is titled Top 10 Good Cartoons That Went Bad. Y'all requested it, don't trip you not. Got y'all. So I'm guessing they're gonna talk about cartoons that yeah they started off like hey this is fire and then I don't know we're just like this is actually kind of boring like what they doing I don't know we gonna see y'all requested it we about to hop on into it um before I do y'all keep leaving those reaction requests all right down below that's how I find my videos to react to it's from all of y'all man so uh let's go you either end in your prime or you live long enough to fall into seasonal rot. Welcome to hey. Watch Mojo, and today True, huh? we're counting down our picks for the top 10 great cartoons that got bad over time. Oh, Family oh, Guy? No. Not again! We're about to do Jedi, aren't we? <sighs> Let's just get through this. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the animated giants that started out strong, then just lost their zing along the way. They could have dipped in quality, overstayed their welcome, or mm. could have just ended on an abysmal note. Some of these series may have miraculously bounced Fairly back later on, but the mistakes can't be my always shit, be overlooked. Boy. I'll let him go. Who cares? They used to be my shit. Number ten, the Ren and Stimpy Ren show. Ren and Stimpy. That's the most ridiculous. I was real, real young when this was As out. As one of the founding Nicktoons for Nickelodeon, the Ren and Stimpy show managed to entice viewers both young and old with its absurd and risque humor. However, John Chris Felucci, the creator and voice of Ren, was fired after season two due to creative differences and controversy. Hey, Dang. what's happening to me? What is happening to that man? No. Billy West did his best taking over as Ren while also voicing Stimpy, but the show's writing wasn't as fortunate. While it tried to emulate the bizarre humor the original seasons had, the series had lost that certain edge that made it truly shine. Mm. We'll say this though, at Shouldn't least they got it rid of to restrain itself, unlike the horrendous Adult Party cartoon reboot. I don't know why I do these things to you! Number 9, Doug. Doug! Doug. I was Watch young too! Listen to sappy music? Young, young. Among the first three Nicktoons, Doug brought more. something simple and unique to the network during its time. A quirky slice of life cartoon. After its Nickelodeon run ended, Disney bought the rights and produced a continuation series. While it did offer some welcome changes, like episodes centered on side characters, the bad outweighed the good in the viewer's eyes. You're fired. What? You heard me! Fired! Along with Billy West not returning to voice <sighs> Doug and Roger, the new era suffered from drastic and unnecessary changes, wasted opportunities, poor characterization moments, and too much buildup to the cinematic flop. Though mm. Disney offered so much for his show, even creator Jim Jenkins agrees that the Nickelodeon run was far superior. Now, back to whatever it is you do. Number 8. Space Ghost Space Coast to Coast. Ghost Coast, 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 this 90s Cartoon Network reboot had good intentions when it decided to bring back Hanna-Barbera's intergalactic superhero as the host of an adult parody talk show. With an animated host and characters but live action celebrity guests, its comedy was subtle but funny. Earlier mm. seasons kept things interesting by straying from the typical talk show formula. We're all eating chemicals. Yes, they help me do my job. And what do you do? I fly and save planets from peril. Later seasons tended more towards spoofs, absurd humor and surrealism. That is, until the money dried up and the AOL Time Warner merger changed things. Hey. Despite a move to Adult okay. Swim, the series never seemed able to be as free or as weird as it was in the good old days. Mm. Well, you learned that, Batman Fantasy Camp. I never went there. Hey, Zorak, get out the diary. <laughs> Here's that diary. Zorak. Another spectacular day at Camp Batman. Put it away. Number seven, Super Jail. I never watched this. Of course, a super jail on every corner of every town of every state of every nation! One of Adult okay. Swim's most unique programs offered a demented sense of whimsy. While light on the story, it guaranteed a generous amount of gruesome violence and crazy expressive animation. Around season two, the madness began to slow down. The violence, while still present, was toned down slightly. Most of the characters were given backstories all of a sudden, and they tried to include story arcs that didn't amount to much. 
I don't know. I never watched these. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Season 3 tried to combine both previous seasons' styles, focusing on character development while bringing back the mass murders. But the change in animation didn't sit well with many. Not every cartoon needs to have depth. Sometimes we just want a fast, simple bloodbath. No, 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 no. <laughs> Number 6, Teen Titans. Peace boy, I'm not going back. I can't. What? Why can't you? Because she's not your friend. She's my apprentice. The original Man, this Teen Titans, Titans is better than Teen one of Titans Go. Network's biggest milestones. Yeah, that shit was fire. blending action and character development with comedy. However, season three suffered due to low ratings and a weak story arc. Season four's story arc kicked things up a huge notch, which unfortunately left season five feeling underwhelming. While mm, it was still enjoyable, the Raven finale things beast. changed, I left that. so many cliffhangers that would never be answered. Not even in the epilogue movie. Sometimes you want to see something that isn't there. The ultimate nail in the coffin was how instead of producing a sixth season to resolve said cliffhangers, Cartoon Teen Network Titans would instead go. greenlight a comedic reboot of the Titans, which would become the bane of any hardcore fans existing. Man, thank That's you. And there is no sixth season to resolve the plots hanging from the cliff? You ended that show? You monster. Number five. Family Guy. Family Guy. Are you going to be traveling alone? Uh, to well, I don't be believe you, man. How you put Family Guy well, on here? By no means family friendly, Seth MacFarlane's magnum opus knew how to draw in a crowd with its hilarious I can't believe they put social Family Guy on this bitch. Thanks to high ratings and fantastic DVD sales, the show made a triumphant comeback after getting canceled twice. However, as the series continued, those good old fashioned values seemed to disappear. The humor suffered Look greatly from heavy Trump. reliance on highway gags <laughs> and overly preaching Seth's personal political <clears throat> views. If I screwed up so bad, how come I'm a billionaire? Billionaire? Please, you're worth 700 mil on the high side. Worst of all, the characters became unbearable and needlessly cruel, and poor Meg is usually their lightning rod. Seth himself has admitted he wishes the series would end, but no matter Man. the needless shock value, Fox refuses to give it up. Bye bye, American Man. situation okay. comedy with drawings. Number four, the Boondocks. The Boondocks, the bro. The white supremacist power. 2020, 2020 is coming back. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Based on the comic strips by Aaron Magruder, the Boondocks was renowned for satirizing socio political and racial views through the eyes of a young kid. Four years after the season three finale, a fourth season was produced without Magruder's involvement. This ended up being a costly mistake. That's it. Oh, now we really are doomed. You know he's only gonna make it worse, right? A show once full of hard, thought-provoking messages was reduced to using forced humor with no real insight, stealing mm. the focus away from Huey, and sucking away most of the other characters' depth. The series finale is ultimately the worst of all, demonizing two groups over a petty reason, and then just ends. Unsurprisingly, viewers rejoiced when the series' suffering ceased in 2014. However, just five years later, news surfaced that a 2020 TV reboot with Magruder's input was in the works. Can't do it. What? Was no that supposed way to be the special I ain't trying to be around these retards. Yeah. <sighs> Number three, SpongeBob SquarePants. Facts, Oops. bro. I guess Spongebob I my, used to be my shit. The little square dude won the but hearts I mean, of I was both a kid, kids and adults you know, with his likable personality and entertaining stories. The 2004 feature film could have seen the series end on a high note, but Nickelodeon had other plans. Though Steven Hillenburg left production, the show pressed on, for better or worse. The writers resorted to rehashing old episode plots and Damn. relied more on mean-spirited humor over the show's original light-hearted spirit. And all I did was sell the same old Krabby Patties and call them new. Do you mind? I'm trying to make a money angel here. Ooh, money angel. Added to this was the fact that the cast of fun, relatable characters became one-note imitations. Patrick what easily being one of the worst examples. While it can't return to its golden age, fans claimed that Hillenburg's return helped Nick's favorite cash cow to improve. At least it did until the creator's death in 2018. Damn. Number okay. two, the Fairly Odd Parents. Man, Where'd Fairly you Odd Parents. This was my shit, bro. I inherited the internet. In its golden days, Butch Hartman's crown creation followed the zoo. I love Fairly Odd Parents. And his fairy godparents. 
It originally ended in 2006, but Nickelodeon ordered another season, and then things turned ugly. We're uh -oh. on it! Doesn't anyone say goodbye anymore? From then on, the characters became less relatable and charming, not to mention the constant addition of bland main characters growing tiresome. Worst of all, the once witty and silly writing that often knew how to work in a moral was downgraded to cheap pop culture jokes and potty humor, usually going against the series' original continuity and mythos. During its 10th season, the show introduced a new character while removing others, changed from traditional to flash animation, and moved to Nicktoons. But that season was ultimately its last. Chloe's making the rest of us look like losers! I am not a fan, and <laughs> believe me, no one Either. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest yeah, videos. Yeah, you have yeah. the option to be notified for occasional videos or uh -huh. all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on whoa, notifications. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, you don't too much. Number one, The Simpsons. The Simpsons, <laughs> number one. Hi, Caramba. Mm. The Hi, Simpsons don't still come on, does it? It still come on? <laughs> Excellent. In the beginning, yes. The Simpsons was beloved by viewers everywhere for its smart humor it's and just been on too long now. I mean, Not to mention so many quotable catchphrases. Know? There are still debates about when the series' seasonal rot began after over two decades on the air. Sheesh, but as time moved decades. forward, fans yeah. began to notice a dip in the show's the quality. The Simpsons older than me! I do, oh. I do it again. The stories began to feel less real, the celebrity appearances became more frivolous than meaningful, and the humor became less intelligent often bordering towards mean-spirited or sucking the charm out of once identifiable characters. On top of it, they're often reduced to rehashing old plots, further proving that the family really has done it all, except finally end. So anyway, I'm strangling him, and I said to Bart- Wait, well, ho hold on a moment. You are strangling your son? Yeah, strangling. I mean, it's not the only tool in my parenting toolbox, but uh, it's the sharpest. Do you agree with our picks? For the most part, I agree, man. I agree. Some of those shows started off strong. And then, yeah, was just like, what happened? I just thought I got older, so I lost interest. But I guess they just got worse. Because, yeah, Fairly Odd Parents, SpongeBob, man. You know, when I was a kid, I used to, I used to love that. Teen Titans, bro. I used to love that. But anyway, let me know what y'all thought down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to see y'all next time. Peace.